and then this recording will be up on our website. So in case somebody can't get on today and wants to look at it later to hear about the classes, then we can do it that way. So. My computer says 1.30, so mm -hmm. I think it's time to start. So I want to thank all of you for attending this event for the spring 2024 classes. And this is a lifelong learning program for anybody 50 plus who enjoys learning. So we don't care what school they went to, where they live, they can still do these classes. We like to have them. So um, for those of you who don't know me or you may be brand new, I'm Darlene Logue and I'm the director. And also joining us is Heather Bristow, who is the assistant. And you will be getting lots of emails from her and she's waving at you there. Oh, and then, um, like I said earlier to the folks who are here, that event is going to be recorded. And we'll place it on our website either later today or first thing tomorrow. So you'll have the opportunity to look at that. So don't forget about it. And so first I want to introduce Emily Beck. Is Emily here? I'm here. All right. Emily would like to say a few words to you. Um, first, I should tell you, Emily Beck is the Director of Member Services at the ISU Alumni Center. And she wants to share some information about an upcoming Legacy camp. Yes. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, like Gerilyn said, I am Emily Beck. I'm the Director of Member Services here at the ISU Alumni Association. Um, and I, I oversee our membership uh, portion of the association, but uh, another portion of my job includes planning our annual Legacy Camp, which is a youth camp um, centered around showcasing Iowa State University and what a day in the life of an ISU student is like. Um, just a brief rundown of what that event looks like. Children and their grandparents come to campus. They attend sessions in a designated major. They go on field trips to see some hands-on learning that's provided at the university. And then they tour various aspects of campus and student life. Um, our attendees also enjoy all their meals in our dining centers. They spend the night in our dorms, and then they get their own little graduation ceremony at the end of camp. So I wanted to share this opportunity with you all, you lifelong learners. Um, I know we don't have all classes offered in the summertime, so this can kind of bridge that opportunity for you all um, to continue your learning while also spending some time with some young, young cyclones in your life here on Iowa State's beautiful campus. Um, this year we've got eight different majors to offer and those in combination with those field trips and tours I mentioned um, will represent seven, six of the seven colleges here on campus this year. So our registration hasn't opened quite yet. It will open within the next two weeks, but we do always sell out. So you kind of are getting a little bit of insider info here. Um, and I will go ahead and drop my contact information in the chat of this uh, Zoom meeting. If you all want to reach out to me with any questions or if you wanna learn more on our website to maybe get yourself on that list and be the first to know when our registration opens. Thanks, Emily. Yes, thank you all so much. Okay, so next we have some sponsors who are very important to our program and I would like to induce, introduce Dawn from Northcrest. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to, um, first of all, say it is so great to see so many familiar faces. I always love that. Even if there's a great attendance of 94 on, so I can't see everybody at once, but those I can see, it's great to, great to see you again. Um, I wanna start out my two minutes um, by introducing um, Emmeline Olson. Emmeline is, um, our senior living manager, and she works with um, everyone who has a desire to learn about Northcrest. So from inquiry to maybe taking a tour, um, and then she works with everyone who moves moves in. So um, I just wanted to put um, a name out there and then also a face with that. So um, just introducing Emlyn. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, second, 
Um, this almost feels like old news, but it's really not because we haven't had a chance to share it. But in November, Northcrest Community um, was the recipient of the Community's Choice Best of Story County Awards. And we actually received three of them this year. Um, the first one was the Best Retirement 55 Plus Community. Um, and this is our 11th year in a row to receiving that award. So uh, very proud of that. Um, and to our, you know, congratulations to our residents for making our community that way. Um, and then also the best uh, of Story County for assisted and senior living. And then um, also the best employer, 101 to 500 employees. So we're very happy to have received that as well. So just a little sharing um, from us on that front. And then um, I know many, many of you are familiar with North Crest, so I don't really wanna repeat maybe what we've talked about in the past, but I wanted to just quickly emphasize the fact that North Crest Community is a charitable organization. Sometimes that doesn't, that message doesn't always um, get out there as loud as some of other things that we have, great things we have to talk about North Crest, but with our charitable assistance, um, really no one is asked to leave um, North Crest due to finances, whether someone outlives their income or their assets, um, or just maybe in a position where they need a little help. And so we mm -hmm. do have assistance, not only um, for monthly service fees down the road after someone comes to North Crest, but we also have uh, the uh, opportunity to offer charitable assistance for our entrance fees mm -hmm. to come to North Crest. So that's a little bit um, more information that we usually share about charitable, but I thought it was really important, um, a good thing to kind of carve out today. Um, and then um, just last note, um, this really involves Emmeline, but we do have some one bedroom units available. If anybody is um, looking to make a move now that, that winter is hopefully mostly past us and spring is on the way, um, it's a little bit easier to make a move but we do have some one, one bedroom units available. If you have interest, please contact Emily. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank, Thank you, you and have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. So I the next person I'd like to visit Carolyn. and have get on is Bailey from Green Hills. Bailey, are you here? I think you are, I'm pretty sure. Hi, everyone. Hi, Thank you for having us this afternoon. Um, I'm on here and then Kylie, our new marketing coordinator is also on here. This is her first kind of spring preview. So she wanted to join as well. Um, and I just want to say thank you to the Alumni Association and thank you to all of you joining today to learn more about the upcoming classes. We're excited for the spring weather and I'm hopeful that the groundhog is right, that we're still going to get an early spring. Um, that'll be exciting for us who are located in Iowa. Um, like Gerilyn said, I'm Bailey. I'm the sales and marketing director over at Green Hills, um, just south of the Alumni Association. And just some uh, notes about Green Hills. We are a 55 plus life plan community. Um, we offer the continuum of care. So independent living, home health, assisted living, long-term care, skilled rehab, memory care, all of those are under our umbrella at our campus. So if you have any um, needs or services while you're here, we can definitely fulfill those for you. Um, something exciting happening over at Green Hills is we are um, expanding our independent living um, area for 20 new residential apartment homes. So we are in the process of filling those with new residents. So uh, this is a great opportunity for those of you who are working through your future planning timeline as we are working for a June 2025 move in. So you have some time to prepare yourself and prepare your home for some downsizing, getting ready to go to market. Um, and we are offering a learning session or a brunch and learn at the end of this month. So on February 27th, if you're interested in learning more about Green Hills and our future expansion, feel free to give us a call in RSVP to join our program to learn more. Um, we would love to have you. We're going to do um, a beautiful program and a delicious brunch um, catered by our uh, service chefs on campus. So we would love to have you join. And if that date doesn't work for you, always feel free to call us and we can set up a private appointment for you to meet with me or Kylie. Um, again, thank you so much and hope you enjoy your afternoon. Thank you, Bailey. Next is Austin from Bethany Life. 
Hi, thank you. So uh, I'm Austin Mortweed, Executive Director of Home and Community-Based Services at Bethany Life. And the program that I'm here to talk to you about today is our Life Choices program. Um, we want to thank Ollie and all of you for having us be a big part of this. It's a part of our program, and we understand the importance of furthering education. Um, what Life Choices is, uh, we were the first initiative of its kind in the state. Um, we are a continuing care at home program that brings all the necessary services that you would need to be able to stay in your home in place as you age. Uh, we partner really well, actually, if anyone needs to go into long-term care, we actually pay that at 100% for you at the time that that would be, would be needed. Not only do you not have to go to Bethany, but we partner really well with most of the um, other continue or the other long-term care facilities that are in the Ames and surrounding area to go where you want to go and where it keeps you happy. Uh, to learn more about our program and how we can keep you in your home as you age, we have a lunch and learn on March 12th at the Ames Golf and Country Club. It will be um, catered by provisions. Um, please give us a call to RSVP at 515-460-4160 or 61 or visit us at lifechoicesatbethany.org and we can get that set up. So thanks for having us. Okay, great. Thank you. So Steve from Clarity Asset Management. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> right. uh, I'm Steve Larson, uh, Chief Financial Officer for Clarity Asset Management. Uh, one of our values as a company, uh, we're, we're fiduciaries, so we look out for the best interest of our clients. And one of our values is to promote lifelong and life-wide learning. And uh, we want to seek the benefit of our community and uh Central Iowa, and a great way to do that is to promote Ollie. And so we're really pleased to be able to sponsor Ollie every year. Uh, one of the great ways to promote lifelong learning and, and, and life-wide learning. Um, I have a class that I'll be uh, previewing later on. Uh, I can talk a little bit more about our approach, but basically we, we want to be a uh, fiduciary for your best interest in financial health issues and uh, promoting the benefit of the community um, through learning, through advice, through counsel. Uh, and we're just so happy to be able to partner with Ali. Thanks, Joe. Well, thanks, Steve. We appreciate your sponsorship with working with us. So I'm just going to tell you all just a little bit about a really great opportunity that we have coming up. Most of you have probably heard this from me, but maybe you haven't, or maybe some of our presenters haven't heard about this, but we're going to be offering a trip to the Grand Canyon. It's called the Grand Canyon Railways and the Verde um, Canyon Railroad. It's going to be October the 20th through the 25th, and it's going to be through Premier World Discovery. And this is an organization that the Alumni Association uses, a tour tour group. And the fun thing is that it doesn't make any difference where you live as an Ollie member, because we're all going to fly into the same spot. We're all going to stay at the same hotel for the entire trip. And we're going to be doing different things like um, going on the Grand Canyon Rail Ro Railway, the Verde Canyon Railroad, um, we'll go to Grand Canyon National Park, Oak Creek Canyon, Sedonia Trolley Tour, Chapel of the Holy Cross, Montezuma Castle, and a lot more things. And I, I don't know if anybody heard about the pink mm -hmm. Jeeps, but one of our early members told me that they have these pink Jeeps that are a whole lot of fun that you can ride in. So you can find a flyer, more information about that on our Ali event page. And then the next thing I wanna let you know about is we have members only lectures. These lectures are for you as a member. This is one of your benefits. The first one is going to be on and they're always from 3 to 4.30 in the afternoon. The first one is they contain depths, what Midwestern lakes tell us about early Earth and Mars with Elizabeth Swanner. And that's on Tuesday, April 16th. That will be in person and as a hybrid. Mm -hmm. Then on the 23rd, we have a World War II story through sketches with Janet DeFries. This is a, a individual who has presented to another OLLI program. And she's going to talk about... Um, her, her dad's experiences. And like I said, that's April 23rd. So this will be <clears throat> online. 
Then we have ISU Museum celebrating 50 years with Lynette Pullman and some of her staff, and that's on Tuesday, April the 30th. That will be a hybrid. And then the origins and fate of the Russo-Ukrainian War with Scott Feinstein. Uh, that's on Tuesday, May the 7th, and that's also as a hybrid. And then after that, uh, we have one more thing for this for spring is we're going to be offering something different we've never done before. We're doing a half day trip instead of a day trip. We're doing a half day trip and we're going to go to Webster City and we're going to tour the Seneca Foundry and an, and an, and an organic. That's kind of hard to say. Um, grain meal and lunch is going to be provided. And that's on Monday, May the 13th. We'll be leaving the Alumni Center about 715 and we'll be back by two. <clears throat> And the deadline to register for that will be April 30th, and we need uh, a minimum of 20 people to make that a go. So now I want to turn this all over to the instructors you're going to hear about from them. And I believe the first one is Sam. Thank you, Gerilyn. The first course, number one, is learning iPads and iPhones. That's probably the only eight-week course this whole spring term. Eight weeks from on Mondays from March 18th through May 6th at 9 in the morning, 9 to 1030. And this is an online only class. Apple's iPhone is a revolutionary smartphone known for its sleek design, high quality camera, and an, an intensive app ecosystem. The iPad uh, pioneering tablet it offers a larger screen for enhanced viewing and drawing and productivity tasks with models ranging from budget-friendly to powerful iPad Pros. Both devices run iOS and Apple's mobile operating system. Uh, and we're going to include, uh, in weeks one through eight, navigating the iPad and the, uh, the navigating the iPad and the iPhone using the home side and other buttons, uh, learning the basic gestures to interact with those devices, and learning the advanced gestures to interact with those devices. In the second week, we talk about making life easier, such as navigating while driving, easier reading, finding information. The third week is contacts and connections. Fourth week is books and media. Fifth week is word processing. Sixth week is privacy and security. The seventh week is backing up storage and sharing. And the eighth, eighth week concentrates on you keeping learning. Thank you. Gail. Gail. I'm Gail Prince. I um, have course number two, date markings on food packages. And uh, uh, something that we started in September of 1968. So it's been around almost 50 plus years. Uh, and there is a lot of confusion about the dates that you see on food packages. Uh, and the big question, is this safe to eat after that particular date? Uh, it has also led to what is a big concern about food waste these days, uh, where we're throwing away perfectly good food when we could make use of it. And what we will be talking about in this course is uh, the various forms that you will see that on food packages. And also, uh, uh, we'll talk about the interpretation of that and also give you some risk factors <clears throat> that you can use in determination of uh, whether I want to eat this or not. And um, because there's always a big question, is it safe to eat after this particular date that's on this package? And many of them use the term Best Buy, BY, as an indicator of when the quality is at its um, peak. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> we will be talking about uh, the different terminologies on the labels that you will see. And uh, one of the unique regulation is it's only required basically on infant formula as to uh, when it's best to use. So by the time we finish this particular class on April 8th, uh, you will be able to 
uh, apply these or understand what these various dates mean and be able to apply some risk factors in determining should I use it or should I throw it out? Um, so uh, this is, I want to make a little clarification here. This is not a dating site, but this is a program on understanding the dates that you can see on food packages. So I look forward to seeing you in this class and sharing with you the 50 years of experience I have with open dating of food packages. Thank you. Thanks, Gail. Here I thought maybe you were going to give us some dating tips, you know? Okay, <laughs> sorry. So class number three, our instructor, I don't believe is here. Introduction to, to LIDAR. That is going to be Adam Skippy. And that's going to be one week on Monday, April the 15th from 11 to 1230. And it is an online only class. So are we ready for our next class person? And that is Randy. Actually, Randy Na is not here today, so I'm filling in for him. This is course number four, the history and meaning of traffic control systems. This will be delivered on Monday, April 22nd from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on Zoom only. Have you ever pulled up to a traffic light and sat there for what you thought was an eternity and wondered why it took so long to get that light to turn green? Do you want to know what these devices are that you see attached to the poles and the arms of traffic control systems? Are you curious as to what that big silver box is on one corner of the intersection? How does the traffic signal know my vehicle is at the intersection? Why are there signals at this intersection, but not in another one in the area that you feel should have one? Here's a place to get your questions answered. We will explore the history of traffic signals, talk about the standards utilized throughout the United States, and it's different in different places. Discuss the requirements to warrant the installation of a signal at an intersection, provide an, a, an overview of all the parts that go into installing signals, talk about pedestrian needs and how those are related to traffic signals, cover how signals are programmed and operated, and take a sneak peek into the future of traffic control systems. So if you're interested in these things, you can take this one day course to find out what came first, the car or a traffic control system? Thank you. This is Gail Prince again. Uh, I'm teaching a course, Summertime Food Safety Tips. Um, and it's interesting to watch the foodborne illness statistics that are published by the Centers of Disease Control, where every summer months they show an increase in foodborne illness affecting um, us. And it may range from a belly ache to serious hospitalization to even death in some cases where we have mishandled food and become uh, ill. Uh, well, why does it always happen in the summertime? Well, it's not just the summertime, but there is an increase in the summer months. And it's all not regarding the heat, uh, but that is a, a slight factor. But it's the way our life changes in the summer um, and what we eat, how we eat, how we prepare those particular foods that uh, tends to... Uh, increase the likelihood of foodborne illness. Um, but we have to deal in the summertime with human factors that are a little bit different and are one of the major ch causes of foodborne illness to increase in the summertime over other times of the year. This class will focus on those factors of preventing foodborne illness uh, and addressing what we do in the summertime that can lead to additional risks. And uh, it's fairly easy, easy to prevent foodborne illness with a few 
key things that we will be presenting. And by the end of this class, you will be able to recognize potential food safety issues and how to prevent them in protecting you and your family and loved ones from the misery of foodborne illness. That class is on May 6th and look forward to seeing you there. Hi, everybody. My name is Chuck Ochter. I'm placing, teaching class number six, Remember the night, the 70s. It's a three-week class meeting um, starting on March 18th, going through April 1st uh, on Mondays uh, from 1 till 2.30, and it's a Zoom-only class. Um, do you remember the movie Network that came out in the middle 70s? Howard Beale, the fictional a TV news uh, reporter, stood up and yelled, I want all of you to get up out of your seats, out of your chairs, and go over to your window and stick your head out, and I want you to yell, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Um, the, the 70s is the story of Nixon, Ford, and Carter. It's also the story of the millions of unsung people to whom Howard Beale's tirade about being mad is uh, uh, makes a great deal of sense. We're going to look at what some of those things were, like the end of Vietnam, Watergate, political upheaval, inflation, women's rights, energy crisis, unemployment, crime and uh, hostages, the move from the Rust Belt to the Sun Belt. Um, we'll also take a look at the me generation and self-expression. Uh, music, uh, the 70s has been proclaimed the decade of music. We'll look at uh, fads, TV, and the arts. The critics of the 70s say it's the uh, the decade that has the most pivotal change of all parts of life. So I'd like you to join me for this class uh, as we walk through the 70s. Uh, we'll have time to share during class. And again, we'll also, like in past classes, we'll have time to discuss via weekly email um, uh, that we'd like you to join. Uh, thank you and consider joining us in this class. Thanks. Uh, class number seven, Barbara Heeland is not here today. She's going to be doing Understanding the President's budget, Budgeting Process. That's a one-week class on Monday, April the 8th, uh, from 1 to 2.30, and that is an online with Zoom only class. Okay, so I assume I'm up for class number eight. I'm uh, one of the instructors. My name is Mike Metz, and we're going to be talking about Volunteer Community Radio, Finding Your Niche, in the community through communication. This is a four part course and we will be holding that Mondays from 1 to 2.30 p.m. And we're going to start on tax day, 15th of April. The first three sessions will be presented via Zoom with the fourth session being conducted online, I mean on site at our studios here at KHOI located at 622 Douglas Avenue right here in Ames. Staff and volunteers are going to introduce you to the history of community radio, what it takes to operate a community radio station, and the importance of local community radio to our citizens. We will also describe a variety of volunteer opportunities that we currently have available and the many ways that you can become involved at this station. You will learn about program production, You'll be able to learn about conducting an interview, editing techniques, and then in-studio procedures will be demonstrated using or what we use to create a good program. So we hope that through the use of conversation, PowerPoint, volunteer testimonies, and samples of some broadcast segments, you'll have a better appreciation for community radio and the importance of local community radio to our citizens. Thanks. Class number nine, learn to play pickleball. I don't believe any of those presenters are here. But yes, we're here. Oh, you're here. Great. Awesome. Yep. Okay. Are we are ready? ready? You're ready. Go. Hi, awesome. Ollie Learners. I'm John Anderson, president of the Ames Pickleball Club. And I'm Sue Cunningham, club secretary. We're here to promote a new class for Ollie. You guessed it. It's a pickleball class. Pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America. It's a sport that can be played by people of all ages and all skill levels. 
and in all kinds of weather, sunny days outdoors and cold wintry days on indoor courts like the one we're at now. The Ames Pickleball Club is partnering with Ollie to offer a beginner's class in pickleball for three weeks from April 22nd through May 6th at the Harvest Pickleball, pickleball and Tennis in South Ames. In this class, we will have experienced players teach you the basics of pickleball, everything from serving and scoring to volleying and dinking. Yes, I said dinking. <laughs> we will cover everything from rules, scoring, equipment, how to play, and we'll even provide paddles and balls. Our emphasis will focus very strongly on safety in the game. We hope you join us on the courts to learn this great game. Happy people play pickleball. Thank you to Merle Brendelin, who took the lead on this initiative on behalf of the Ames Pickleball Club as the course facilitator. It's truly a sport for everyone. See you See on, on the, the courts. courts. You guys are all good. Run. Oh, you're muted, Ron. I hit the wrong picture of the microphone. <laughs> can you see and hear me now? We can. Okay, right. Sorry about that. You'll have to cut that. Okay. My name is Ron Palumbo, and I'm offering class number 10, The Time Traveler's Guide to Elizabethan England. For most of us, the thought of Tudor England conjures up images of a country bursting with glorious adventures and literary masterpieces, all under the rule of the first Queen Elizabeth. But for the people who lived it, it was a time racked with religious controversies, high infant mortality rates, and a life expectancy in one's 40s. Not only that, uh, during her 45 years on the throne, Elizabeth faced multiple uprisings and assassination attempts. This PowerPoint presentation offers an introduction to the realities of everyday life in Tudor England, from the perspectives of peasants and merchants, as well as that of the nobility. We will explore the divinely ordered class structure, the impact of religious divisions, the nature of crimes, punishments, and entertainments, as well as what Elizabethans ate and drank and how they dealt with the life passages of marriage, childbirth, parenting, and death. So if you've ever wondered what it would take to live and survive during the reign of the Virgin Queen, I will hope you will join me for a four Tuesday tour of this vibrant and dangerous era beginning at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, March 19th. Thank you. Ron Palumbo again. I will also be offering class number 11 on the influence of Madison Grant and his book. Now, perhaps the most influential American contribution to what is now called replacement theory was a book written by Wall Street lawyer Madison Grant and published in 1916. Its title was both a prediction and a warning, The Passing of the Great Race. Grant, a prominent and well-connected conservationist, later wrote that he wanted to make Americans aware of the need to adopt eugenic measures to protect those of Nordic stock, like himself, from the current deluge of immigrants from Southern and Eastern Europe. His book was widely read, endorsed by two U.S. presidents, and gave Grant enough influence that he was called upon to help draft the Immigration Act of 1924, which set strict quotas for immigration based on nationality. Though Grant himself is largely forgotten, his book is still in print and his ideas live on in our current debates about immigration. In this single session class in person, we will explore the creation of and responses to Grant's work in the century since it first appeared. If you're curious about strange twists and turns in the history of ideas, please consider joining me on this journey through time at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, April 16th. Thank you for your time and attention. Hello, my name is Heidi Kennedy. I am going to be teaching, I'm sorry, class 
Number 12, what is normal aging? It will be a one week class held on Tuesday, April 23rd from 9 a.m. to 1030. And this will be a hybrid course. What we're going to talk about during this course is what is normal aging look like? What to look for when it's time to ask the doctor for help? What is normal and not normal as we get older? Things like depression, anxiety, um, what is the difference between normal aging and dementia? What to look for when um, new things come up, aches and pains, um, memory loss, cognition concerns, and really what, what questions you should be asking and when you should be asking them. So we're just going to have an overview of what normal aging should look like and when it, it becomes not normal, um, when to ask for help. Thank you. I'll see you on April 23rd from 9 to 1030. And Jim Krisinger, you are next. Hi, my name is Jim Krisinger, and uh, the course ID is 14 slash 15, mixed results from SCOTUS, which stands for Supreme Court of the United States. The course dates are March 19 and 26 and April 2nd from 11 to 1230. It's a hybrid course. In last year's course, we saw how the Supreme Court had moved sharply to the right. This year, we have more, more mixed results. We'll spend most of our time examining the following cases. The case that eliminated affirmative action, or not. The case that unexpectedly preserved a key section of the Voting Rights Act. The case that struck down the Biden administration's student debt cancellation program. The case where free speech rights prevailed over an anti-discrimination law protecting L LGBTQ folks. The case that rejected the independent state legislature theory. And two Iowa-related cases a SCOTUS case brought by pork producers suing California for that state's law, telling pork producers how to grow pigs. And the most recent Iowa Supreme Court case that presents the recent and current law on abortion in the state of Iowa. We'll also touch on the Second Amendment, Mifa Prestone, and introduce you to something called the Shatter Docket at the Supreme Court. Last, we'll look at whether the 14th Amendment Section 3 bars Donald Trump from serving again as president, whether or not the Supreme Court has issued its decision uh, by the time we're uh, by the time we meet. Thank you. Class number 16 is building an opera. The instructors are Jody Gold. I'm not gonna get that right. It's Jody and Chad. It's a one week class on Tuesday, April the 9th uh, from 11 to 12.30 p.m. It's only in person. So consider giving that one a try. Hello? We can hear you, Tom. Go ahead. Oh, I can't see anything. Okay. Uh, it's Tom Barton. I'm uh, proposing uh, course number 17, beginning a ukulele. It lasts three weeks, starting Tuesday, April 16th, and running to April the 30th, and runs on 11 a.m. to 1230 uh, PM. The course will be taught in person, no Zoom whatsoever. About six years ago, when I was 77, I decided to seriously take up the ukulele. Thus, I purchased a uke and began a search for a tutor or mentor. This search was in vain. So, in a nutshell, that's why I'm offering this course at Ollie to help people get over the considerable beginning humps without all the stumbles that I made during the first year. If you're totally unfamiliar with music, I'll teach you all the music essentials you need to know right up front, and also teach you how to play songs on the ukulele without being able to read music at all. Will it be challenging? Yes, because learning something substantial and complex is always hard. You will need to practice at least an hour a day for the two weeks of the course. Will it be fun? Absolutely. We will spend a significant amount of time laughing at ourselves and playing fun music. Our goals are, one, experience the pleasure of making music. We all know the pleasure of listening to our favorite music. This takes it to the next level. Two, experience the sense of pride for having mastered a musical instrument that also allows you 
to sing simultaneously. Three, play in a group. This is my goal for us. Playing in a youth group every Monday night is the highlight of my week. My ultimate goal is that we start a senior citizens ukulele group. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye. I'm Philip Larson. I'm a resident of Boone and I lived here all my life. My course is number 18, travels on seven continents. It is a one week class that will be held on May 7th from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And it is an in-person class in the Horton Conference Room. In the mid 1960s, two high school classmates and I drove to Mexico City. When we crossed the border back into the United States, my friends couldn't wait to go to a restaurant where they could order cheeseburgers. I, on the other hand, wanted to see much more of different countries. In 1972, I first visited Europe. 41 years later, I stepped out on land in Antarctica, completing my travels to all seven continents. In the intervening years, I traveled extensively and qualified for full membership in the Traveler's Century Club, an organization that requires members to have visited a minimum of 100 countries. My class will tell attendees about the people and the places I encountered on those travels. I saw magnificent things, Mount Everest, Victoria Falls, Ayers Rock, Machu Picchu, huge groups of penguins in Antarctica, and polar bears in Svalbard. I could create a very long list. I met fascinating people too, Sir Edmund Hillary, Owen Lattimore, and many less well-known but interesting and accomplished individuals. Most of my experiences were positive, enjoyable, but not all. I would never want a repeat of the night I was held at gunpoint on the Rhodesian Zambian border and accused of being a mercenary. But travel presents both good and bad times, and to me, the good far outweigh the bad. It is my hope that this class will create an interest in those who see it, to travel to some of the places I've been and experience the same things I have. There are so many wonderful things to see in the world, and I enjoy talking about them. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Class number 19 is Exploring World Music Part 2 with Homer Garst. That'll be a four-week course from beginning on Tuesday, March the 19th and ending on April the 6th. It'll be from 1 to 2.30, and that is going to be in person at the Green Hills Community Room. I'm up next. I'm Mike Coview. Can you hear me okay? Um, I'm teaching course 20 and 21. Who's in charge here? Uh, do algorithms and artificial intelligence control our lives? The course will include four sessions on consecutive Tuesdays at 1 p.m. starting March 19th. So have you experienced any of the following fairly recently? Have you been approved for or denied credit? Uh, for people in our age group, that might include things like buying a car. Um, have you had an x-ray read by a radiologist? I bet a lot of us have done that. Uh, are you frustrated because your favorite baseball team or pro hockey, basketball, football, or soccer team traded away your favorite player and you don't understand why? Or is an, air, an airline travel route you frequented in the past no longer available? Or are you mystified by some of what shows up on your social media feed? Any of these experiences may result from the operation of algorithms and artificial intelligence. We're going to explore the definitions of these and related terms and how they're affecting us. Put another way, we will ask whether we should be grateful for what algorithms and artificial intelligence may be able to do for us, or should we be terrified of what they may mean for our future? And we will talk about what should or should not be done about this. Also, we may dip our toes into using an artificial intelligence engine to answer questions. That latter uh, thing depends on the, um, the, the time available in the course. 
I should note that this is not a course in how to design algorithms or to construct an artificial intelligence engine. That's way beyond my expertise. Uh, consequently, there are no math prerequisites for the course. Great. All right, so for class number 22 and 23, Ryman Gardens History and Mission, Sarah could not be with us today. This is a one-week course on Tuesday, April the 16th from 1 to 2.30 in the afternoon, and this is a hybrid, so it will be in person at the Alumni Center and online with Sarah. Hello, my name is Sarah Canova, and I'm the business manager of the Iowa State University Creamery. I'm offering course number 24, Reestablishing a Landmark, the ISU Creamery, on Tuesday, April 23rd at 1 o'clock p.m. The ISU Creamery was reestablished in 2020 after being closed for 51 years with the mission to educate students, entrepreneurs, and the public alike. In this course, you will receive a presentation to learn about our history, the process of us scaling up to where we are today, and our plans for the future. After the presentation, Danielle Christofferson, the production manager, and I will give you a tour of our historic courtyard, teach you how we make ice cream and cheese in our production facility, and finish in our retail store. Thank you for your time today, and I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday, April 23rd. Class number 25 is the Lincoln Highway in Story County, and that will be with Hank, and that will be a one-week session on Tuesday, April the 30th from 1 to 2.30 p.m., and that will be in person at the Iowa State Alumni Center. Class number 26 and 27 is going to be a hybrid. The title of that class is Dad and His Roses. The instructor is Mary Buck. And I'm sure most of us in the Iowa area have heard about the Buck Rose. Uh, that is a one day session on Tuesday, May the 7th from 1 to 2.30 p.m. And that, like I mentioned, that is a hybrid. Hi, I'm Ray Riley. And the course numbers are 28 and 29. Uh, the course is Art at the Knoll. It's a one day hybrid class on Tuesday, March 19th from 3 to 4.30 Central Daylight Time. For those of you who are not Iowa Staters, the Knoll is the home of the Iowa State President, Wendy Winterstein, and her husband, Robert Wagner. The first floor is public space and contains art from the university collection, museum's collections. For this class, we will not take a tour of the Knoll, but we'll look at many of the artworks that are found there. A couple of tidbits about the art. There's a portrait of an early dean of the what was the College of Home Economics, and it is stunning and has changed the way I look at portraits. There are several tiny paintings that let us think about our students and what happens to them during their student years. There's a print showing an amusing celebration of the reopening of Morrill Hall after its extensive, extensive renovation. And another work is just plain funny. There's also large, gorgeous landscapes and a mini painting of a monarch butterfly. Wendy is an entomologist after all. As usual, I will expect some audience participation. So come join me. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Ray. The next class is number 30 and 31, Wills, Trusts, and Powers of Attorney. Jonathan Coy could not be here with us today, but he wanted us to let you know that his class will be on Tuesday, March 26th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. This will be a hybrid, so we will be in the building at the ISU Alumni Center and online. And Larry Brown, you are next. Thank you. Uh, this is class number 32, Investigating U.S. Intelligence, uh, and it will be on Tuesday, April the 2nd, from 3 to 5 p.m. in person. In 1954, President Eisenhower created the Commission on the Covert Activities of the CIA. Here's a key excerpt from the guidance they provided to the CIA. It is now clear that we are facing an implacable enemy whose avowed objective is world domination by whatever means and at whatever cost. There are no rules in such a game. If the United States is to survive, longstanding concepts 
of fair play must be reconsidered. By that time, the CIA and its World War II predecessor, the Office of Strategic Services, had been operating with minimal rules since the beginning of World War II. The class will pick up at that point in the early days of the Cold War, discussing how the CIA continued to operate on a very long leash. That was mainly because neither the president nor Congress really wanted to know what the CIA was doing. As long as they were carrying this secret war to the communists without triggering, triggering World War III. We'll look at how investigations of the CIA and US intelligence in general resulted in more rules and what we have now, is, which is formal oversight from Congress. Thanks for your time and I hope to see many of you in April. Thank you, Larry. The next class is 3334, Transportation Funding in Iowa. Stuart Anderson will be the instructor, and this will be on Tuesday, April 9th from 3 to 4.30. Again, this will be a hybrid, so we will be in the building at the Alumni Center and online. And Good Les afternoon. I'm uh, Les Wolf. I'm going to be one of five members of the Ames Anglers Fishing Club uh, doing course number 35, Fishing Basics. We'll be meeting at in person at the Alumni Center on five consecutive Wednesdays from 9 to 10.30 a.m. Um, March 20th through April 17th. Between the five of us, we got close to three centuries of experience uh, fishing Iowa and the upper Midwest. So we're going to start out with basics, tools you use, uh, the rods, the reels, line choices, uh, how to rig, and, uh, and the lures you use for the various species here in our neighborhood. We'll be asking the participants about their experiences uh, and their experience level so that we can tailor the subsequent meetings uh, to their level and what their target species are so that we can use those tools and the specific presentations for those target species. I'm gonna talk specifically about crappie fishing in Iowa and the Midwest. Um, all through the session, we'll be talking about where to go, be it locally, regionally in Iowa and the upper Midwest, and even time allowing, we can talk about our experiences in the Caribbean, Mexico, and Canada. So, and uh, again, if time and weather allows, we may even take a field trip in April to Ada Hayden or Hickory Grove because April and May are actually the peak times of the year to go fishing. Again, time allows, we can talk about more specialized subjects like boats, electronics, selecting a guide, and so forth. So looking forward to uh, meeting you on Wednesdays in April and May, April, March and April, excuse me. Hi, I'm Tom LaGrasso and I am going to be presenting course number 36, Critical Minerals and the Clean Energy Transition. On Wednesday, April 24th, it is um, online with Zoom from nine to 10.30. AM. So clean energy technology that we have um, been deploying in Iowa, the wind generations, the solar cells, they all utilize a larger variety and a larger quantity of minerals than is currently used by conventional power generations or combustion vehicles. Projections indicate anywhere from 10 to 50 times the current production capabilities for these minerals will be needed to achieve sustainable and responsible energy uh, economy. So the question of course is where will all these minerals come from? This course is going to explain, explore what strategies are being used, what the national strategy is and the global initiatives to address these critical materials. 
how are we going to get more of them? Are we going to do it responsibly? And how can we protect the environment in meeting the demand that's going to be necessary? Please join me on Wednesday, April 24th. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ron Palumbo, and I'll be offering class number 37, an introduction to neurodiversity. If you're confused by the term neurodiversity, that's understandable. It now has three overlapping meanings. When the concept first emerged in the 1980s, it referred to the biological fact that every brain is wired differently, and that this fact accounts for the wide variability of personality structures across the human species. Over the past few decades, the concept of neurodiversity has been used to challenge the one-size-fits-all concept of normality. This challenge was led by persons who felt stigmatized for exhibiting what was labeled odd behaviors. And many of these individuals are now viewed as being on the autism spectrum of behavior, such as animal scientist Temple Grandin, who insisted that she was, quote, different, not less, unquote. More recently still, the term has served as a descriptor for an emerging social movement of people who feel that they are being marginalized simply because they looked and act different. If you're interested in learning more about this concept, she, please join me for this single session in-person class at the Horton Classroom uh, on uh, Wednesday, May 8th at 9 a.m. Thank you for your time and attention. Hello, everybody. I'm Jane Cox, and this is class 3839. It's a hybrid course, so it's going to be offered online and in person. And the title is From General to President, and it's three weeks for three weeks on Wednesdays from 11 to 1230, March 20th through April 3rd. And I don't know if you've ever thought about this before, but every president of the United States, except 14, has been has had experience with the military in some kind of way. And out of all those who have had experience with the military, only three have risen to the very top rank that the United States has to offer. And those three are George Washington and Ulysses S. Grant and Dwight David Eisenhower. And so this class is going to look at each one of those three men who rose from, uh, in some cases, humble beginnings to general to president and examine what their personalities were like. What were the things they learned? What did they discover about leadership and the difference between a military life and a political life? And here are three quotes as kind of a little teaser. Uh, George Washington said, perseverance and spirit have done wonders in all ages. Ulysses S. Grant said, if you see the president, tell him from me that whatever happens, there will be no turning back. And Dwight David Eisenhower said, the supreme quality for leadership is unquestionably um, integrity. And without that, no real success is ever possible. So there, we'll explore these quotes and many other facts and information about these three presidents who are, we consider some of, I would say, the greatest people uh, that have governed the United States and have had influence on the US and the world as well. So I hope you'll join me for From Grant to President, March and ending April 3rd. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. The next class is number 40, End of Life Choices with Timothy Grandin. This will be one week on Wednesday, April 10th from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. in person at the Alumni Center. And the next class after that is number 4142, What in the World with Jeff Schrader. This will be three weeks on Wednesday, April 17th through May 1st from 10 to 11.30 in the morning. That time is a little different than our normal time frames. And that's because the class will be 
held in person at the DMAC Boone location. It would also be a hybrid, so there will be an online aspect for that as well. And Gary, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Yep. Okay. Okay. So my name is Gary Alls. I am running a hybrid course, number 43 stroke 44, Introduction to Soccer, uh, which is a one-time only class, Wednesday, May 8th, from 11 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. Soccer, the most popular sport in the world, and don't take my biased word for it, the stats speak for themselves. Over 43% of the world's population identify themselves as soccer fans. 3.5 billion spectators and 250 million players. Imagine what those numbers would look like if Taylor Swift dumped Travis and started dating a famous soccer player. <laughs> soccer. soccer is the second most played sport by adults and children combined in America, just behind basketball. If you go to your grandchildren's soccer games and wonder what you should be yelling, saying in support of little Tommy or Bella, then this class is for you. If you want to make a connection with your grandchildren and understand soccer terms, know who the best players are, discovers, discover which are the most successful teams, then this class is for you. If you wonder why your son or daughter loses their mind at your grandchildren's soccer games and starts yelling at the referee, coach, and other parents, then this class will help you understand what drives them crazy. Although no guarantees, it will fully help you comprehend what turns them into insane human beings. It's never too late to pick up another vocation, and why not soccer? My class introduction to soccer can be easily adapted to answer anything and everything about soccer. You have the opportunity to be the coolest grandparent on the block, so sign up now. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you, and I hope you score by registering for my class. Okay, Ellen, I believe you are next. So welcome. Um, I want to introduce myself. I'm Ellen Herman, and this is Alicia Payneard. We are two members of a three member team at Friedrich Iowa Realty and our team is called Home to Showcase Paradigm. And that's what we do. Our class will be offered um, on one week or it's actually a single session, March 20th from uh, 1 to 2.30 p.m. And um, it's entitled Tips and Strategies When Selling and Selling Your Home and Moving. If the thought of selling your home overwhelms you almost to the point of bringing you to tears, we get it and we're here to help. Whether this is your first time to sell a home or you've sold many, our approach may surprise you. It's uncommon and has been undeniably successful, earning most of our clients 5 to 20% above comparable properties and selling in a fraction of the time, which has... Yes, it's brought our clients tears of joy. In this course, with the help of visuals, we'll show you what matters, why it matters, and discuss ways to get there. These will include how to create the perfect storm to have your home showtime ready before the curtains go up, as they say in theater. You can only sell it once. Have no regrets. Thank you. Thank you. And Vivi, you are next. You're muted, Vivi. Yeah, not a day passes, I think, when most of us don't reflect on some aspect of life on something of the human condition. It could be politics or ethics or economics or whatever. And these reflections, when they are articulated in a serious way, become a philosophical system. All of us are in a way philosophers of various kinds on various themes, but uh, during the course of human history, a great many of them have uh, put to words in books and articles their philosophies on various issues. And I like to review in this course 
some of the major philosophies that have had a significant impact and influence on human history. Philosophy is more than being unhappy intelligently. Philosophy is uh, uh, a way of recognizing who we are and what society and what human problems are. So that's what I plan to do. I would like to talk about uh, philosophical systems from uh, India and China, uh, Europe and France, and from various countries. So I trust uh, you will be uh, uh, informed and enlightened by these, my own reflections on these philosophies. And Vivi's class is number 46 on philosophers and philosophy that will be at North Crest Community on Wednesday, April 20th through, eight, or sorry, March 20th through April 17th from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Jeanette? Yeah. Hi, I'm Jeanette Berenger. I'm with the Livestock Conservancy and I'm teaching course 47 slash 48, Managing Livestock Breeds for a Secure Future. That'll be a one week course on March 27th from one to 2.30 uh, Central Time. There's an important component largely absent within modern livestock and poultry agriculture, maintaining biodiversity. Biodiversity is essential to the long-term security of our global food systems. As Carrie Fowler puts it, we're in the midst of greatest and quickest change in climate in the history of agriculture and our future food security is totally dependent on biodiversity. Although much focus is put on seeds and plants, relatively little is done for livestock and poultry. The majority of the world's food supply draws on just five livestock species. And within those species, the numbers of breeds used is quite small compared to non-commercial and historic breeds, many of which face extinction. This places the world's food supply at risk should anything happen to these species and breeds such as disease, irreversible, adverse genetic change, or bioterrorism. Join my webinar and we will explore the crucial work to discover, secure, and sustain the remaining biodiversity we have left in our livestock and poultry. And Kathy? Hi, my name is Kathy Andrews. My course is number 49, and it's entitled The Unbroken Thread Sampler Co Collection, The Samplers and Their Makers. This course is a one-time lecture held on April 3rd, which is a Wednesday, from 1 to 2.30 p.m. I'll be lecturing in person, and we'll have many antique samplers with me for you to examine in addition to a slide presentation. Samplers are a surviving part of history that the makers have created with their own hands and that we can hold in our hands today. Betty Ring was the foremost scholar and collector of American schoolgirl samplers. When she died in 2014, Sotheby's auctioned her collection. We will take some time to look at detailed images of a sampler from her collection and discover how much someone was willing to pay for the work of a young girl from so long ago. Then we'll move on to look at selected samplers from the Unbroken Thread Collection. These 35 samplers come from the United States, England, Germany, the Netherlands, and Wales. They date from 1660 to 1901. We'll learn about the girls who made them, their families, and the times in which they lived. We'll also look at detailed images showing both the technique and the skills of the girls who stitched them and what changed in the purpose and style of samplers from 1660 to 1901. If you have a sampler that you would like to bring along, there will be time at the end of the lecture for us to look at it together. I hope you will join us on Wednesday, April 3rd. Thank you. Hi, I'm Steve Larson. I'm teaching class 50, uh, staying financially healthy in uncertain times. It's an in-person class on Wednesday, April 10th uh, from 1 to 2.30. Uh, 
it's in person because I, the, the class is designed to be interactive where we can talk about issues that are important uh, to you and gain insights, how we can improve and maintain uh, strong financial health, even during times that are very unsettling and, and insecure. Uh, it's in times like this that we can be enticed to take certain actions that actually undermine our financial health uh, much like when you're on a physical diet, you can be enticed to uh, enjoy food or activity that could be detrimental to your physical health. Our time together will help us identify fears and behaviors that unsettle uh, even the best of financial plans. And we'll do this by revisiting what we call the three financial uh, pillars or three pillars of financial health, spending, investing, and giving. And your sense of life purpose, values, and goals that guide how we participate in each of those pillars. And the process would be like regaining a, a true north perspective, uh, renewing our focus on the things that are really uh, important, uh, the things that really matter to us, so that we can continue down a healthy financial path, uh, even when we're tempted uh, to do otherwise. So. Look forward to uh, interacting with you. I don't think I see Austin here anymore. So I will go ahead and announce his class number 5152, Aging in Place. Like I said, this will be with Austin. Um, more tweet is the last name. This will be on Wednesday, April 17th from 1 to 2.30 p.m. And it will be hybrid. So we will be in the building at the Alumni Center and online. And Charles? Yes. Hello, I'm Charles Knicker. Uh, and with Vivi uh, Raman, uh, we're going to offer Ali Course 53, Saving Democracy. Uh, it'll have four sessions. Each will be an hour and a half. They'll be, they'll be held at uh, Northcrest Retirement Community. The first session will be Wednesday, April 24th, again from 1 p.m. to 2.30. And then the three following sessions will be Wednesday, May 1st, May 8th and May 15th, again from 1 to 2.30. Now, November 2024 general election will be the most significant in this nation's history. Pundits and partisans from the far left to the far right have been saying that. And even conversations, I think we all agree that something needs to be done, but we all disagree. Actually, there are radical disagreements about what saving democracy means. Now, students in a previous course we've offered on how to hold civil conversations about democracy have urged us, well, what can we do or what can our groups do? And it turned out uh, a Harvard professor uh, who's written on uh, democracy uh, urged us to write the text on these conversations. So it's going to be structured on, if you remember, President FDR called it four universal freedoms. Session one will be on the freedom of speech. We'll cover the Bill of Rights and particularly the voting, what's going on with voting. Uh, the second session will be freedom from fear, which is a way of looking at where we are with global conflicts and also the role of mass and social media in terms of indoctrination. Uh, the session three will be freedom from want, which is a way to look at climate and say the migration issues. And the last one we call freedom of conscience that will cover religion, education, censorship. Let us say we, we know we're gonna have spirited conver uh, conversations. So hope to see you there. And by the way, thank you, uh, Heather and uh, Geraldine and the OLLI curriculum for uh, committee for being so supportive. The next class is number 5455, State Lotteries Nationwide and here in Iowa. This will be with Sue Ravenscroft, and it will be on Wednesdays, May 1st and 8th from 1 to 2.30 p.m., and it will be hybrid, so we will be in the building at the Alumni Center and online. Karen Bates. Hello, my name is Karen Bates and I'll be teaching course number 56, Finding Your Rhythm with Drumming. 
This is an in-person class only. It will meet Wednesdays from 3 to 4.30 in my home studio in Ames. The dates are March 20th and 27th and April 3rd and April 10th. And as a bonus, the Skunk River Drum Circle meets at my house on April 3rd, immediately after the drumming class. So this is a little extra bonus for you. First of all, you don't have to be a musician. You don't have to read music to attend this course. Secondly, you don't need to purchase a drum in order to take the class. Drums will be available for you to play during our classes, as well as different types of percussion. But if you have a drum, please bring it. That's fine. During the class, I'll give you information on where to purchase drums, including a local drum maker who lives right here in Ames. You'll be able to play all kinds of drums. Perhaps you'd like to play a Middle Eastern Doombeck. Perhaps you would like to play an African djembe. Perhaps you would like to hold a drum, a buffalo drum. Perhaps you might like to be interested, you might want to play a bongo drum. Lots of people like to play bongo drums. Perhaps you would like to play a handheld frame drum that you hold like so and you play with your fingers. Perhaps you would like to play a drum that you hold what's called a beater and play it with a beater. We will learn about the history of drumming. We will learn about the benefits of drumming, which are backed by research. We will talk about and play rhythms from all over the world. We will learn about connections to the rhythm of nature. We will talk about healing with drumming. And of course, we'll learn how to play. There's a Lakota saying that the great spirit loved the drum so much that he gave everyone a heartbeat. We know from research that drumming together creates kindness and compassion. It also reduces chronic pain, anxiety, depression, and infl inflammation and it's just play, plain fun. So I hope you'll join me for some fun starting on March 20th. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Class number 57 has actually been canceled. Class number 58, Real Authentic Mexican Cooking Class will be with Veronica Ortega. This will be one week on Wednesday, May 8th from 3 to 4.30 p.m. at Vintage Cooperative in Ames. Class number 59, the Mongol Empire in World History and the Mongols of Today, will be with Ning Chia. And this will be two weeks on Thursdays, March 21st and 28th from 9 to 1030 in the morning on Zoom only. And class number 60, Treasure Boxes, the Lacquer Box Tradition in Russia crafts, Russian Crafts with Carol Wildman Rudy will be on Thursday, April 4th from 9 to 10.30 in the morning, online only with Zoom. And now I'll hand it over to Sam. Well, thank you. Class number 61, Apple Watch, the future of health is on your wrist. It's a one day class on Thursday, April 11th from 9 to 10.30 in the morning, online only. The Apple Watch is a versatile smartwatch that integrates fitness tracking, health orientation capabilities, and wireless communication. It seamlessly connects with iOS devices to deliver notifications, running apps, and more. The Apple Watch serves as a tool to enhance daily productivity and well-being. Some of the areas that we will discuss include fall and crash detection and emergency help, heart monitoring, including AFib detection, calling 911, emergency SOS via satellite, fitness monitoring, navigation such as driving, walking, and turn-by-turn -turn instructions, phone calls, text messages, email notifications, weather and FEMA alerts, location altimeter and compass, Siri for information, reminders, and alerts. Thank you. Class number 62, 
Heat Wave Causes and Survival is a one-day class on Thursday, April 18th from 9 to 10.30 in the morning. Online only. Heat waves pose significant dangers to human health and are increasing in intensity, duration, and frequency as our planet continues to warm. This, in this class, we address the physics of evaporation. No, you don't really have to. This won't be over your head. It's, it's pretty darn simple. Uh, what causes heat waves? Studies uh, directly assess human heat stress among young people has found that the humidity is when it's at an absolute maximum, like 100%, the upper limit of human adaptability is just 87 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll talk about the medical terminology, conditions and treatments, how to stay safe during excessive heat waves, staying and, and ways to cool your body, and resources for monitoring threatening conditions and useful information. Thank you. Okay, class number 63, Treasure Your Family Photos, But How with Ning Chia, will be two weeks on Thursday, March 21st and 28th from 11 to 12.30 p.m., 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., sorry about that, online only with Zoom. And Barbara? Hello, um, I'm Barbara Pleasance. And uh, I'm teaching um, cor offering course number 64, The Holocaust, which will be held on Thursdays from 11 to 12.30 for six weeks, beginning on April 4th, ending on May 9th, and it's on Zoom only. <clears throat> as the number of witnesses to the Holocaust dwindles towards zero, and as awareness of this part of history declines worldwide, it's important to be aware of what happened and why and what lessons are relevant for our time. In part, this is why I taught this course for many years at Iowa State and I've taught it before at Ali. So without going through all the topics, <clears throat> in this class, I hope you will learn the answers and perhaps the background to some of the questions as follows. What exactly was history's role in laying the groundwork for what was to come in Nazi Germany? Why was it so difficult for those trying to escape Nazi persecution to gain entry to the United States? You heard mention earlier of Madison Grant. Uh, he's one of the reasons. <clears throat> what country admitted 10,000 chil children uh, who were refugees from Nazi-occupied countries and thus saved their lives? What country had the largest Jewish population before the war at over 3 million of which, of course, 90% were murdered. What country saved almost all of its Jews while under German occupation? What group was first to be murdered in pursuit of the perfection of the Aryan race? What exactly is Holocaust denial today and who promotes it? And of course, a big question and one we will hope to touch on and maybe partially understand is how could what had been a European democracy, known for its universities, its science, its music, its literature, come to perpetrate an organized, state-sponsored, methodical genocide of millions of human beings? So if you're interested in this, I hope to see some of you in April. And uh, thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Lynn Carey, and today I'm sharing about class number 65, Keep Calm and Bake Pie, Making Pies with the Ames Pie Club. This class will be offered one day on Thursday, April 11th from 1 to 2.30 in person at the Vintage Cooperative in Ames. I'm the newest member of the Ames Pie Club, and I hold the office of designated driver in case someone has too much pie. On the day of the class, I will serve as Exhibit A as proof that you do not have to have any experience to enjoy baking pies. Not any at all, <laughs> I guarantee it. Other much more experienced instructors are President Pat Horton and historian Barb Marvick. The Ames Pie Club formed in 2014 and meets monthly. 
Members are dedicated to the concept that baking and sharing pie can change our community and the world one slice at a time. All three members of the Ames Pie Club will be on hand for this class to demonstrate how easy it is to bake pie from scratch. You will learn about necessary planning, skills, tools, and ingredients. You'll get a chance to sample a sweet pie and a savory pie, and you'll walk away with an equipment list, some recipes, and the confidence to bake and share your own pies. So we invite you to come and join the pie revolution. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is John Leopa. And um, as you're all well aware, the Super Bowl's over. Uh, you may not be aware that yesterday and today, as we speak, uh, catchers and pitchers are reporting for spring training in Arizona and in Florida. And uh, what I'm going to do in my course, it's entitled How Iowa Met Baseball, um, the myths, the history, and the players. Uh, we're going to explore Iowa's 154-year connection to Major League Baseball. Uh, 227 native-born Iowans, as of the end of last season, have played in the Major Leagues. That means at least one pitch or one at bat. Seven are in the Hall of Fame. We're going to learn something about most of those players. Uh, we'll explore the myths and the reality of the origins of the game. We're going to discuss about how it came to Iowa. Uh, the first club was organized in 1858 in Davenport, uh, just before the Civil War. We're going to look at the role that the war itself played for all of the death and destruction. Uh, it served as a catalyst for the spread of the game of baseball with incredible speed here in Iowa. And you were basically uh, not recognized as a complete community uh, as pioneers came to Iowa. Uh, you first of all obviously had to take care of your family, then a school and a church, but you had to field a town team, a baseball team. And uh, so we'll look at that. We'll look at some of Iowa's baseball pioneers. Um, in my course, I, for one of the three classes, uh, we'll be meeting three consecutive Thursdays from 1 to 2.30 at the community room in Green Hills at 1, 1 to 2.30 in the afternoon. But for one of the classes, I'll come in my replica uniform, dressed as Calvin McVeigh from Montrose, Iowa, who was the first paid uh, baseball player born in Iowa. And then we'll uh, have a chance also to look at some of the, I have an extensive collection of baseball books, including some that go back to the 1860s and 70s. And I'll be sharing some of those with the class. Uh, it is an in-person class because for my three classes, uh, I'll bring part of my collection of baseball cards and memorabilia, which I've been collecting since I was 12 years old, spending paper out money, carrying the Des Moines Register and Tribune in Des Moines. Um, I, uh, excited to do this. I've been teaching for Ollie at Drake, but I haven't had a chance to come up, uh, to Ames and take part in Ollie. Uh, I've been doing my program all over the state of Iowa for the last 13 years. So I'm looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to seeing you on April 18th. Go Yankees. Thank you. Hello, my name is Heather Johnson. I work at the Octagon Center for the Arts and I will be offering two classes here at the Octagon. The first class is number 67 on mandala design. And uh, some of you may have seen some of these visual, brightly colored designs. And so I'm gonna lead an introduction on how you can also create your very own. And we're gonna break it down, keep it simple. We'll be doing um, little black papers like this and which will make the colors pop a lot. And to make it even easier for beginners, we'll be using a lot of different templates too. So we want you to just have fun, come experiment with it and just leave with a couple of great colorful designs. And the mandala workshop is at the Octagon one day on Thursday, April 25th from 1 to 2.30 here at the Octagon Center for the Arts. Number 68 is a terrarium workshop or also a container uh, with plants. And uh, this will be a good introduction. Here are a couple of samples I've done with other projects and I've used uh, reused um, containers that I found at secondhand stores or garage sales. And so this will be a instruction on how you can create your little garden that you can have inside. It could be covered or open, there'll be options. 
and we'll have supplies such as the soil, um, the lava rock, uh, different accessories as well. And here's one in person I brought in from home. And you can see there's even a little gnome in there, some specialty rocks. So everything will be supplied unless someone wants to bring a special container they want to use for their own little garden. And that one will be held at the Octagon on Thursday, May 2nd, one day class from one to 2.30. And I hope uh, to see you unleash some creative uh, opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Uh, class number 69, Photography Tips and Techniques is spread out over six weeks, but, but there are a couple of dates that we don't meet because of other commitments uh, for whatever, I don't know for sure. Anyway, there'll be no class on March 28th nor on April 25th, but the course is on Thursday mornings, basically from March 21st to May 9th with those two exceptions of those two dates. It's from three to 4.30 in the afternoon, online only, creating pho photographic images, uh, perhaps to share an event in your lives or to make a statement expressing your ideas and values or creating art. The basic principles of photography are the same, whether you're using an old brownie film camera, thousands of dollars worth of DSLR cameras with telephoto lenses, tripods, and maybe even lighting equipment, or the excellent cameras that are on our smartphones. In fact, most people these days do photography with iPhones and Android phones. No matter what you use, this course is designed to help you achieve your photographic goals and improve your photography. In our six weeks, we will address what you want to learn. And additionally, we will cover cell phone camera basics and DSLR camera basics, composition, lighting, post image processing, backing up, sharing, and printing. And we end the course by challenging ourselves to continue doing photography throughout the year. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, you can sign up for classes tomorrow morning. Thanks. Well, uh, this is Jane again, and this is a short road trip opportunity, I guess you could call it. Uh, the course name is uh, Franklin and Eleanor. It's one week, Thursday, May 2nd, from 3 to 4.30, and it will be in Story City at Timberland Village. Uh, about a year ago, I taught a longer course on Franklin and Eleanor, Roosevelt, of course, uh, one of the great power couples, and they each added enormously to each other's lives, and independently, they did great work as well. And so Geraldine asked if, if I would be interested in going to Timberland Village and offering the course, a, a shortened course, just one hour and a half there. And I said, sure. So it's going to be in person only, but if any of you are interested in making, as I said, a short road trip up to Story City, Timberland Village, which is a retirement community, um, that would be great. It would be good, good to see you there. And Heather has volunteered to send out an email beforehand reminding people that this opportunity will be available for anybody who wishes to do it. So again, that will be on May 2nd. Isn't that a lovely word, May? That's good. Thank you. <laughs> good afternoon, this is Jim Patton. Uh, I'm an Iowa farm boy. And uh, the title of my presentation will be, Do You Remember? and what's new. And we're gonna have fun also meeting at Timberland Village, which is, as Jane mentioned, almost a first for us. But we're gonna have fun with group participation, storytelling, reminiscing, laughing and having fun. I'm gonna have a couple handouts to give us some guides. But for instance, we're gonna have some stories about your first electric lights. Now, most of the stories will probably be true, but we'll see. And then we're gonna have some show and tell. As an example, how did they used to save the corn they wanted to use for seed? We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to have some things that you might not think about in, in reference to history, but we're going to talk about water. We're going to talk about the challenges that some of the people had with water through the 20th century and today. And then we're going to have some aha memories. What was special about March 1? 
Now, all of the things we talk about are going to primarily be around the Midwest, uh, about things that occurred in the Midwest that occurred probably in the last hundred years. But uh, I grew up on a farm in Northeast Iowa, and my dad and I really enjoyed finding out what about people and what they did in their lives and their families. So that's what we're going to highlight. But before I sign off, I wanted to remind you, Iowa Public Iowa Public Television has a program on February 26th at 6.30 called The Tractor Wars. And this was as John Deere, Ford, and International Harvester tr were trying to gain a position in the farm equipment industry. I think you're going to find it really interesting. But my class again is, do you remember? And now, what's new? On Thursday, May 9th, from 3 to 4.30. Look forward to seeing you. And Jerry, are you still there? I'm here. Awesome. I'm Jerry Schnur. I will be teaching class number 72, Judicial Selection in Iowa, Elections to Merit Selection. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of how we select our judges in Iowa, going back to the territorial courts uh, and uh, the appointment of our judges as a territory by the president of the United States, the adoption of the constitution uh, in Iowa. There's uh, more than one constitution that's been adopted. And then um, in the early 60s, uh, the constitution was amended to adopt what was called the Missouri Plan. Uh, it allowed for merit selection of judges. Uh, and there's some quirks uh, about that that we'll talk about. We'll talk about some of the uh, social and political forces uh, at work. And then uh, some of the legislative changes uh, that have been proposed and enacted in recent years uh, as we go forward. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you on March 21st at 5.30. This is an online course only. Uh, there will be time for discussion. We encourage questions and discussions. So thank you very much. I would like to thank all of our instructors who were able to be with us today. We knew that some could not be here, and we knew this was long, but this is such a great opportunity to hear just a few words from each of them. So what we're going to do now is... We're going to open this up to questions. So if anybody has any questions for one of our instructors, you're welcome to do that. Um, the one thing I would like to update is I told you that we're doing the recording of this presentation. I thought it was going to be on the event page. I was wrong. It's going to be on the registration page. So um, I visited with the person who's doing that, and we're hoping to have that up by end of business day today, if at all possible. So, so feel free to unmute your microphones and ask your questions. I can't believe somebody doesn't have a question. I I think I want to do the pie class, personally. I <laughs> have a question, Jerry. <clears throat> Jerilyn. Um, there was one about the president making a budget. Was that the ISU president or the United States president? I don't know. Mm. Do you remember who, who was the instructor here talking about that? Yes. And oh. who like no, it was Barb Helen number seven, and that's going to be the U.S., not ISU. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I can tell you I've been to the drum class also. I went, oh, the last time they did it, I was going to go for 15 minutes and take some pictures. I stayed the entire hour and a half. So it's a lot of fun. You don't have to have any skills. It's lots of fun. <laughs> There's not a bad class in the group, folks. They're all good. So. Somehow I think drumming on the church bench would be better than taking the drum to church and drumming there. Because <laughs> I find myself drumming all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, the fun thing is there's a lot of different instruments there. You don't have to have anything. You can just use what's there and have an opportunity to try. Anybody have any questions? So don't forget, registration opens up tomorrow morning, online, 8.30 a.m. I'm hoping that my computer's just going to keep going ding, 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 ding every time that goes through, all right? 
the instructors who are still with us, do any of you have any questions or any other additional comments you'd like to make? No. Okay. Geraldine? Yes. Um, did I miss a discussion of the trip? Of uh, the trip to which one? Webster City. Um, I basically said a little bit about that at the very beginning. It's just a half day trip. Um, it's going to be to the, the, the Seneca Foundry and it's an organic grain mill. Um, we leave about 7.15, 7.30 and we'll be back by 2, 2.30. Lunch is included in that and it'll be fun. I can tell you that the Seneca Foundry happens, um, one of our Ali members happens to be a, a family member who owns that foundry. So I think that'd be cool. And what a great idea to have an organic grain mill um, so close to us. I think that would be extremely great. So we're going to have tours of all of those locations, both of them. Well, I'm hoping Mike Metz takes the uh, pie class <laughs> so that we can look forward to prairie pie. Prairie pie. <laughs> Damn, you realize that prairie pie is cow pie. <laughs> I'm I'm wondering, Sam, is that in the sweet or savory category? <laughs> when when I grew up, it was cow pie, and it was from the alfalfa and the clover. <laughs> you sure it wasn't buffalo chips? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Hey, dear Lynn. Yes. I didn't say our location because I wasn't sure if we thought about doing it here or if it's at the Alumni Center. Well, we've already got it in the catalog. Good. Remember which number you are, Helen? 45. 45. You are going to be at Horton in our building. At Horton? Yep, in our building. Okay, great. Gerilyn, yep. this is Jerry Holton. Yes. I want to thank you for bringing all for nearly all of your, your instructors to join us today. I think this is a great way to give a pitch for your classes. You all did a great job. They did, didn't they? They did a nice job. And they were all given 90 seconds. They did a great <laughs> job. <laughs> a great I show. <laughs> Hi, this is Margaret. I um, Maybe I spaced out during one of them, but did I miss one about... Uh, Treasure boxes. Oh, um, that was the lacquer boxes, maybe. Yeah. Yes, Carol was not able to be here with us today. Do you have a specific question, Margaret? Um, what is it about? What What is it? The class. Oh, I could go back and look at the re the thing you sent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Carol is a presenter from. She works at the um, Russian Museum in Minnesota. She's done several presentations for us. She's very good. We don't have bad instructors. So I, I just have to say that. Right uh -huh. I don't think we've had a bad instructor ever. Um, but she does a lot of research on that. She'll have lots of pictures to show you. Um, time for conversation. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wasn't here, Heather and I just read their titles and when it was so mm -hmm. last call has there been much any interest from the locals about the arizona trip yes there has been so just to put everybody's fear at rest so one person said so was there any chance this is going to get canceled no this trip will not be canceled because we're working with a um tour provider and if for some reason we don't put enough people in it they will also maybe some other folks maybe want to do this and they'll come in they'll join us so it'll be perfectly fine there might also be some alumni who might be joining us but that trip will go there's no doubt about it that sounds really fun yeah i hope you'll do it yeah, me too. <laughs> so, Geraldine, if I have a friend that wants to travel with me who isn't an OLLI member, how does that work? Very good, Beth. I am taking the approach like the Alumni Center does. They say traveling with alumni and friends. So if you're a single person going and you want to take a friend with you, I'm not going to force them to be an OLLI at ISU member. It would be nice, 
but they don't have to be. So, because then that way you can go and have a good time and introduce them to what fun things Ollie does. Good question, Beth. I had that planted. You all know that, right? Can you, <laughs> Carolyn, can you break the system if you sign up for more than 10 classes? Not that I'm aware of. You want to give it a try? I plan to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing I would really strongly encourage everybody to do is you know, look at the catalog, make sure your dates work, make sure if it's a hybrid class that you're registering for the one that you want. If because um, if it's a hybrid, it can be in-person or online. So make sure you pick the right number. Um, can they I would else like to get a, I would like to get a clarification. Critical minerals in the clean energy transition. Uh, the presenter said that would be April 24th. And I think the catalog says May 1st. The original schedule was for May 1st, but the Department of Energy has actually requested a meeting with him on that day. So we had to reschedule it. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. I have a question for Tom and uh, Sam. If Tom managed to crash or crash the system, will that be a case you discuss in one of your classes, Sam? Uh, if, if I'm asked, I will discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Shouldn't that be corrected under AI? <laughs> I sent an email out to all the members, hmm, I don't know, about 45 minutes before this all started. And there's a couple different opportunities, different things you can look at to possibly do before spring classes get started. So check that out. And one of them happens to be partly involved with AI. I get all kinds of things sent to me from different people. So we're I'm sharing the wealth with you. So what was that April date for the minerals class? 24. 24. 24. Okay. Thank you. That information has also been updated on the online catalog and in the registration form. So as you go through and pick out your classes, the time, dates and times will be listed there as well. Okay, great. I have a question for Lynn about the Pi class. Will you be? Uh, will we be able to know what type of pie it is by the type of pie birdie you use to let the steam off? You know, I'm a new member. <laughs> we we'll learn together, Mike. <laughs> Mike, I think you asked a question that's above Lynn's volunteer pay grade. <laughs> If you, if you want me to answer, you can pay double for the class. <laughs> Is that you, you don't need a pie bird to vent steam. You can make slits or <laughs> cut pictures in the pie crust. <laughs> I know that. I was testing Lynn. <laughs> Birds are prettier. <laughs> you know, that reminds me of a pie I made one time for my father. Uh, and I did it in a square pan. Uh, and and I and I and I wrote in the crust, pi r squared. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Mike Metz had challenged me to make a joke about that, and I decided to forego that particular pleasure. But thank you, Sam, for encouraging Mike in his um, wonderful punniness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll some time to get around to it. <laughs> <laughs> Geraldine, are we done? <laughs> we are. So if you all have oh, come on. Don't you take the fun away. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to leave at any point in time. I'm no. probably going to shut you down here in just a couple more minutes, if unless there's any other questions. And then I, I was really ahead. asking if Mike was done. Oh, well, I don't know about that. He's never done. I know the answer to that. <laughs> He's never done. <laughs> Thank goodness. I, I sometimes think we should have the Sam and Mike show. Mm -hmm. so if you've well, actually, class, we do have the Sam and Mike show on KHOI yes, 89.1. Right. So yes. you and, can and listen this, to it this, anytime. And this week's episode, even though it was a lot of serious content, when I listened to it, I was just laughing right along with us because it was funny in places. And 
put in a plug, you can hear it rebroadcast 1030 on KHOI Saturday morning. Okay. Or you can stream it at your pleasure. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, if you happen to get into a class where they're both there, you want to come to class early. You want to get there before class because there's all kinds of puns and things going around. And the first time I heard them together, I went, I was laughing hysterically. It was so funny. Sam, she's putting the pressure on you. I yeah, I know. I know, Mike. And you too. <laughs> well, this is it. Last call, folks. Going, going, gone. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank Take you, Carolyn. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.